Hey everyone, today we're going to look at the firewall on a Synology NAS. So we're going to start with the basics and then we're going to work our way up by really just focusing on the facts of how the firewall works in specific so that you'll be able to take some of this knowledge and implement it on your NAS and try to harden the security and maybe configure a few of the things that you haven't configured yet. So this is going to start really rudimentary, so feel free to fast forward through this if you already know what a firewall is. But if you aren't sure what a firewall is, we're going to quickly go over it now. So in computer networking, a firewall monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic and permits or blocks data packets. So what does that mean in layman's terms? What that means is that when you have a firewall in place, you're filtering traffic that is attempting to connect to a specific port. Now your router has a firewall and a lot of devices have firewalls, including your Synology NAS. Those are classified as software firewalls. So it's important to note the distinction that you have a software firewall on your Synology NAS and you also have a firewall on your router. When you open a port on your router, you are opening it to the external world. So you're saying that anyone outside of my current network can connect to this port on this device. So when you're port forwarding, you are port forwarding to a specific device. You're not port forwarding to all of the devices on your network, just one. When you use Synology's firewall, that is not the case. So when you open a port on Synology's firewall, you're not saying the entire world can access it. You're saying the devices that can connect to that Synology NAS can access that port. So that generally means local devices. The only way the outside world can connect to that Synology NAS is if you open the port on your router and you open that port on your Synology NAS. Now that's assuming that you have the firewall enabled on your NAS. So from this point forward, if I say internal firewall or external firewall, what I really mean is internal firewall as in the firewall that is on your Synology NAS and external firewall as in your router. A firewall is just a firewall, it's the same thing, but the reason I'm distinguishing them both is because we're gonna be talking about how you can secure your NAS from local devices and from external traffic. So that's broken down in the simplest way that I can try and explain it. What I'm gonna try and do now is explain Synology's firewall. But before I even get started, I wanna say that it is super important, and I'll say this later too, that you allow access to DSM to start. So if you lock yourself out of DSM, you're gonna to have to reset your NAS. The first thing that you always have to do is you have to allow access on that management UI, which by default is port 5000 and 5001, but you can just select the built-in applications and make sure that you allow access on the management UI. So by default, Synology allows you to create multiple firewall profiles. So that means that you could have a specific profile, you know, say profile A and profile B, and maybe A has specific ports opened that B doesn't have and vice versa. So that just uh, this just allows you to pretty much switch between firewall profiles. I'm not gonna get into the use cases, but I'm sure people have their reasons. So after creating your profile or using the existing profile, when you get into the firewall itself, rules are completed from top to bottom. So what that means is that when network traffic comes in, it will go through the rules from top to bottom. So for that reason, it's very important for your bottom rule to be a deny all rule. And the reason why you're setting it up that way is because you're saying to the network traffic, you can come in and if I don't specifically allow you, meaning I don't grant you access, you are gonna get denied. That's pretty much the most basic way that I can explain it. So it's very important to know that that bottom rule is your deny all rule. Now on the top, this is where you have to create all of your rules where you allow traffic. Um, you can do it in one specific rule if you want. I don't recommend this, but you can go through and you can check off all of the different services that you use and create one specific firewall rule. So you have a allow rule and you have a deny rule. I don't recommend that you do this, but I'm just explaining it how it works so that you, you are aware of it. Um, the way that I recommend you do it is you create individual rules for every single port that you'd like to open, every service that you'd like to open. Now you can do this by selecting from Synology's built-in applications, and they have a big list here that you can select. Uh, not everything is here, but they have a, a good baseline. 
or you can go over to the custom section and you can specify the exact port that you need to open. But both of these will allow you to create individual rules. So the reason that we're setting it up like this, and we're gonna to get to this in a little bit, is so that you can specify port specific firewall rules. So you have a few options for these firewall rules. The first is a specific IP address. So when you click into that, what it gives you the option of doing is specifying an IP address that can access this NAS. So that's by default how it's set up. The second option is a subnet. So what you can do is specify your entire local subnet. So let's assume that there's a port that you wanna open and you wanna open that port to only local devices. If you specify the subnet here, you'd be able to control access that way. The third way is IP range. So what you're basically saying is that I will allow IP addresses from this starting IP address to this ending IP address. So 192.168.1.5 to 192.168.1.10. That would give you 5678910. That is the specific IP address. The second option that you have is location. And this is very important, and we'll get to this a little later, if you are exposing your NAS to the outside world, meaning that you open a port on your router to your Synology NAS. So this is great if you open a port on your router and you know that there's never gonna be a time where traffic should be coming from outside of your country, for example. You can specify a, a location rule so that you only get traffic from your local country and all other countries are blocked. We'll get to that a little later though. So this is the reason why it's very important to separate all of your firewall rules. And you're basically doing it so that you have control on what can and can't access those specific ports. So now that we know what a firewall is and kind of the Synology NAS firewall basics, how the actual firewall works, we're gonna look at securing your NAS internally and externally. So there is a distinction and I'm gonna go through both of them. So I secure my NAS internally. And what I mean internally is from internal traffic. I have a firewall set up and I specify the internal traffic that I want to access my NAS and the internal traffic that I don't want to access my NAS. And the reason I do this is because I treat it more like an access control list rather than a traditional firewall. So I wanna be able to say, these specific devices can access this NAS on these specific ports. If I didn't implement the firewall, what I'm saying is that all devices on my local network can access my NAS. So I'm gonna come up with a really bad hypothetical situation right now, but it's just kind of to prove how the firewall could work. So let's assume that you don't have a guest network set up at home and you have all of your friends and family members, they come into your house, you give them your Wi-Fi password, and they can just use the internet as they please. What you're really doing is you're saying that they can access your local network as well. So let's assume you made DHCP reservations for all of your local devices, and you know that all of your local devices are between the IP address range of 192.168.1.5 and 192.168.1.15. You can set up a firewall rule on your Synology NAS so that only those devices can access your NAS and anyone outside of that would not be able to access that NAS. So if somebody comes over and they connect to your Wi-Fi like you know they normally do and they tried to access your NAS, they're going to get denied. So that's the easiest way that I can explain it. You are blocking traffic internally and you're saying that only specific devices can access your NAS. So now that we talked about internal access, we're gonna shift over to external access. And for external access, I am giving the exact scenario where you open the port on your router to your Synology NAS. So using an example, let's say that you port forwarded 5001 to your Synology NAS so that you can access DSM from anywhere in the world. Now I'm not gonna get into why you shouldn't do this. If you did wanna do this, you should look into setting up a VPN if you're interested in that, I'll leave a pop-up right now on how you can set up OpenVPN on your NAS. But let's just assume that this is the scenario that you have and you open that port for the entire world. So now that we know that that port is opened, what we have to do is we have to try and limit access as much as we possibly can. So for certain people, that might be actually just setting up the location filter. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through, create a new firewall rule, and we're gonna say that only connections 
from my specific country, the current country that I'm in, can access this NAS because there's never going to be a situation where I'm outside of this country. And if there is, you'd probably change the firewall rule before you left. So that's one way to do it. And I created a little chart here that will show you kind of the, the way that you can funnel down from the most access to the least access. Your goal has to be to try and shrink who can access this NAS. So we know that for DSM, we're going to limit it by location because we're saying that, you know, I'm never going to be outside of this country. And, you know, in this specific case, that works. But now let's look at something like hyper backup. So let's assume that you have a Synology NAS on site and you have a Synology NAS off site. You leave it at a friend's house, parent's house, whatever. So let's assume that you didn't set up a VPN. And what you need to do is you need to open the hyper backup port on your destination firewall so that you are able to back up your local NAS to your destination NAS. So in that specific case, the best thing that you can do once again is limit access, but you're not going to limit access to your entire country. You need to try and shrink that down even more. What you're going to say is you're going to say, hey, I have a source NAS and I have a destination NAS and that source NAS is only going to have one IP address or two IP addresses, whatever. You can create multiple rules for the same port. But the point is you're limiting access and you're saying that I am only going to accept connections from this one specific IP address. So now you've limited it even further. So yes, the port is opened. And, you know, we can debate whether that's smart or not, whether you should use a VPN or not. But at this point, it doesn't even really matter because you're saying only one specific IP address can access this. Everything else in the world is going to get declined. So if you're coming from that IP address, great. If you're not, you're going to get denied. So that is how you can try and limit external access. So like I said a little earlier, your entire goal is to take the entire world and narrow it down as much as you possibly can so that only specific places or IP addresses can access your NAS on that specific port. So I realized that I just gave a lot of information and this is unlike almost every other video that I've ever created. But the reason I tried to do it this way and I hoped to do it in an objective way where I just give the facts in a way that's easy to understand so you can implement this the way that you have to implement it. Um, but I'm hoping that you can take what we just went over and then go and implement this on your NAS in your local network, whether you have ports opened externally or you don't, and just set your NAS up in a way that makes sense for you. So I mentioned this before, but it's super important to note again that you have to allow access on the management UI. So that's into DSM itself. If you want to, you can specify only your local network can access DSM, whatever you want to do. You just have to make sure that you create a firewall rule to begin so that you can access DSM. So that wraps up the video for today. This is not really a tutorial. It's more of an explanation of how the system works. Um, if you guys like this type of video, please leave it in the comments so I know. Uh, if you want me to go back to the tutorial style, I'm happy to do that as well. Um, if this video helped you out at all, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks, guys.